Hi, David Moore, Equity Advantage, and I've got Robert Smith of Peregrine Private Capital here with me today, and we're talking all things DST, inflation, stagflation, all kinds of other good stuff. So uh, one of the things that, that uh, we, we talk about a lot, and, and I actually have a presentation that's up on our YouTube channel on end games, but uh, right now we're in a market where people are looking for a way out a lot of stuff. And, and that end game presentation, I, I broached a whole variety of topics. Obviously, 1031's in there. We talk about uh, REITs. We talk about DSTs, both DSTs, Deferred Sales Trusts and Delaware Statutory Trust. And I, I want you to talk a little bit about Deferred Sales Trust, but we talk about up REITs also. Uh, structured sales, which is basically an uh, institutionalized installment sale. Talk about installment sales, but there's a whole variety of different options you've got out there if you don't want to do an exchange. But if you want to do an exchange, maintaining some tax deferral, we've got a couple different options. And I, I really, I, I sort of feel like the upreach, the ultimate installment sale. I mean, you pay, literally pay the tax as you, you choose to pay the tax in whatever increment you want to over time. But do uh, you have anything you'd like to sort of put out there to our audience today on, on uh, the DSTs, both of them, and upreads? Yeah, actually. Or any other? I, I, I think that's a very, very good point. Uh, people, we are periodically asked about the other DST, a deferred sales trust. And because when you're, you know, we tell people today when they sell their properties, you know, because we're at a market top or some type of market top, we believe. Good news is you're selling out at the top. Bad news is you got to get back in. And so people always want to, you know, is there a way I can sell out of the top and hold my money out until the market collapses and I can buy back in? Well, at some point, some genius created the Deferred Sales Trust, which in essence allows you to do that. That being said, whenever anyone brings up a Deferred Sales Trust, Deferred Sales Trust, I simply tell them to ask uh, the syndicator, show me the rev proc. There is no IRS rev proc relative to Deferred Sales Trust. That means the IRS has yet to make up its mind as to whether it's a good thing, bad thing, a go, or a no-go. So, if you're going to do a deferred sales trust, which we do not recommend, you have to understand there's very significant potential liability in the IRS coming out after the fact and issuing a rev proc that disqualifies them. And then you've got, you're in a world of hurts with a monstrous tax liability to look at. Whereas DSTs have been in place now for 20 years, and there is a specific rev proc or the rev proc specific to DST as being compliant with 1031 exchange. So one has one is supported. One has been one has been uh, has been validated or endorsed by the IRS. The other has not. So from a structural standpoint, one carries significant liability. The other does not. And uh, I think you really hit it on the head when you said, when you described uh, 721 upreads as the ultimate installment sale. We get a lot of questions about 721 upreads and uh, all section 721 of the Internal Revenue Code. And it allows you or people who are at a point in their life where they no longer intend to 1031 exchange for it anymore. You 1031 exchange. In the, old, the good old swap till you drop. Right. Swap yeah. till you drop. Yes. Right. And But they get to a point where they don't want to do that anymore. And they just want, they want to be in a position to end it at some point in the not too distant future at a time of their choosing. And that's where 721 upreads can be very, very advantageous. You simply do a 1031 exchange into a DST property that is part of an existing 721 upreach. Then subsequent to that 1031 exchange, you then do a 721 exchange and your fractional DST interest is taken into that REIT along with the remainder of the property. 
And then after a predetermined interval, that fractional interest change in, changes into operating units of the REIT, of the trust. And so you achieve greater diversification over all the properties in the REIT. And then you can sell those units subsequently at any time of your choosing and in any amount. So that allows you or can allow you to stage your taxable event in terms of when it's most advantageous for you to incur that tax liability relative to the rest of your financial profile. So upreads are very good end game for people who are, you know, at the end of their at the end of their swap to you drop cycle and want to continue to defer capital gains tax but want to be able to control if and when they pay those through the sale of units of the upreach. So, 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 so if you didn't follow Bob through that whole deal, the bottom line is he's going to sell you an interest in a DST that then is absorbed by the REIT. So don't think that you've got to coordinate all this paperwork. Damn, all son, you do that. Things, you do that so right? much better so, than I so do. Basically, he's going to sell you a DST. It's going to be absorbed by the REIT. And then you get to sell right. your shares of the REIT when you choose to sell them. So when you're looking at, I mean, we, and we have this discussion you, all the time right now. Why don't you come work for us? Yeah. Why don't you do everything I can to get fired from this place? What okay. are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just kidding out there. But, you know, you, you look at it, and it's yeah. like, okay, it's, it's the ultimate installment sale. It's I mean, and, and, and the thing is, we get asked right now, I had somebody yesterday that called up, and they're looking at, at uh you know, taking the money and going to do some other things and, and, and whether we're talking about converting assets from investment to residence, so on and so forth. But you start looking at at the tax rates and you start, okay, well, you know, winter tax is going down. Well, maybe, maybe not. They're typically always going to be going up, right? But, you know, we've got this inflationary period where every dollar is, you know, worth less every single day. So you're that always juggling. Itself is a tax. Yeah. So you're just juggling that tax right. consequence. And, and, and that upreach literally allows you to sell when you choose to sell. So you're not dealing with what would be involved with a, a, a what a monetized installment sale, a, a, a structured sale, uh, a just basically an installment sale where you're looking at payments and, and basically, by the way, one, one of the end games, the installment sale option, you wouldn't believe how often I've gotten calls through the years where somebody has taken an installment sale and they were promised the thing was going to go 10 years and they didn't put some acceleration provision in it and now it's being paid off and now they're calling me up wanting to do the exchange on that payoff and it's too late as soon as they take that that thing. Right. So. That's one of the other things I really like about the upgrade is you don't have to worry about one a buyer defaulting on you and and two a balloon payment coming in. You're literally going to do things as you need to do it. So whether your income goes up down whether you have some losses elsewhere to offset the gains, it's just it's a beautiful thing. It's very simple, it's very clean. You don't have to structure it, you don't have to pay for it and you don't have to and relatively speaking there's little possibility of fallout when you as when you do your own deal. Yeah. So you're right. So so several of the sponsors you work with today are actively and, yes. and by the way, this is one of the things that was technically under attack with, with the tax reform too. But I think we're through that turbulent period on right. that anyway, where I think we're good. Yes, I I would say uh, once again Today anyway. Today any once again yeah. ten thirty one exchange has uh, survived another uh, attempted assault by government, and uh, uh, I mean, it's not done until it's done. But I think uh, things are, you know, the horizon's clearing, and I yeah. think we're going to be okay. And the upry was was one of those things that's sort of up on the yes. chopping block, and and so at least today, and, and we're talking what November twelfth, we 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 have uh, our our stepped up basis stuff uh, preserved at this moment. And uh, 1031 looks to be taken care of at this moment. There's other things that are out there. Just be aware of it. But like I said at the, at the top, make sure if you're considering a sale, make sure you talk to your tax people. You know, talk to them. Understand what's going on, where we are with all this stuff. Don't get yourself in a spot where you thought, gee, I, th I thought I was going to be okay, and I'm not. So, 
But I, I really I like those options. When people look for end games, you know, obviously one choice is just sell and pay the tax. But you, if you're going to do that, you got to know what you're going to be paying, right. right? But if you're looking at some other uh, preferential tax treatment, I, I really like the upgrade. I think it's a great opportunity for people. Uh, obviously, we, we've got that whole DST menu, and you're, you're going to have the ability to diversify. And I think one of the things that I look at going into this, this potential cycle is I want my money protected. I want inflationary hedges. I think you know, ultimately, I always say real estate's the ultimate uh, hard asset, tangible asset, inflationary hedge. Somebody, one of my clients with a retirement account goes buy gold, silver, they're betting it's going to go up in value, and, and what you're selling doesn't have to do that. So it's going to be there and, and really, especially if you start looking at and, and uh, your sponsors have all different loan to values. I, I guess on the loan to value thing, I, I know we've talked about it before, but now that I've brought it up, why don't you talk just briefly about somebody that comes into you? I mean, it's, they're not just buying a single asset. They're buying, they could buy multiple different DST offerings in different asset classes in different regions and different loan to values, the, the aggregate of which would be used to meet their needs. That's correct. And as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, the great strength of DST at this point in time with uh, so many markets being so overpriced, we think it, your principal hedge uh, uh, when exchanging back in against overpaying for a single asset is to diversify over multiple assets. And again, because of the fractional ownership nature of DST, you can do that better with DST, we believe, than you can possibly do yourself. And you can diversify over property type, you can diversify over uh, geographically, and increasingly, 20 years ago when DST started out, it was usually one property well, uh, excuse me, uh, one program, one property. And now many DSTs increasingly look like small REITs. Uh, by way of example, uh, there is a major uh, DST product provider, I am prohibited from uh, naming it, that's actually bringing a single DST program to market in the not too distant. A single asset DST program? It's actually, it's a single DST, but it will have 38 different properties wow. in it. Okay. So increasingly DSTs are looking like small REITs. So, there, and so you can diversify among different DST programs, different property types, different geographic areas. As David mentioned, different loan to value ratio. But you can also divert, there is also diversification within the individual DSTs themselves. It is property type specific, meaning if it's a self-storage REIT, they're going to have multiple self-storage properties, albeit in one program. If it's an apartment REIT, they may have multiple apartment pro pro properties, albeit in one program. So you can diversify, uh, you can diversify better in this space than any other, uh, than we believe you can possibly do yourself. Yeah. And that's, that, 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 that's, that's a significant advantage. And David also mentioned leverage, and that's something, because we mentioned, you know, the fact that we are now in an inflationary environment, and it is indeterminate how long that will last. Historically, one of the best hedges in an inflationary environment has been leveraged real estate, because in essence, you get to play the same game your government's going to play. You know, we're transitioning from a decade of low interest rates and stable prices, which allow the government to accumulate over $20 trillion in debt and counting. And now, even though they tell you they don't want inflation, they need inflation to start inflating away that debt. Okay, and so that allows you as an investor to play the same game that your government is playing. You can inflate away some of your debt with dollars that are worth less day after day. So historically, leveraged real estate has been an excellent hedge in an inflationary environment and with DST products, because there's all types of different leverage levels or points you can mix and match. You can choose the amount of leverage you want in your portfolio going in to this new inflationary cycle. 
So a couple of things I just want to clarify real quickly. So in recessionary times, typically we see people's properties maybe decreasing in value, which ultimately means they've got less equity. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the loans are requiring a lower loan to value also. And I, I want to stress that when you're buying into these DSTs, it's non-recourse debt. Yes, so you've got the ability sometimes to get the leverage you need through the DST that you might not be able to get just on a single asset or going right. out to buy stuff. The other thing I just want to mention is, you know, when we're talking about up REITs or REITs, a REIT, a real estate investment trust, is, is not something that qualifies for 1031. It's a stock. So the way into it is going to be through that upreach channel. Yes, right. And and DSTs, I always describe them as, as sort of a, an exchangeable REIT. And, and I think especially with that offering that yeah. you're talking about, that's really w what it is. And, and, and it gives you the ability to you know, diversify even through a single DST offering. You're exactly right. And as we mentioned earlier, the capital aggregates going into DST properties really is increasing geometrically, which in turn results in much more rapid absorption of the DST product, i.e. a shorter shelf life for that property program. And I believe that's one of the drivers behind these increasingly large individual DST programs with multiple properties because not only does it serve you well from a diversification standpoint, but it's a significantly larger portfolio. So it's hoped that it will have a longer shelf life in the DST space. Great. It's a place to go. There you go. The place to so. go. We think yeah. So. So uh, we're going to wrap it up for today. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Thank so you, David. Once again, David Moore, Equity Advantage, and Robert Smith, Peregrine Private Capital. Uh, please uh, watch, like, and subscribe. It really helps us out. And, and if you've got topics out there you'd like us to address, either one of us, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach out to Seymour, C-M-O-O-R-E, at 1031exchange.com. So you'll take care of any questions or needs you've got. And thanks again for tuning in today, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care, and happy holidays, everyone. Thank you, David. Thank you, Bob.